Mom Hacks, episode number 42. My name is Krista, and I'm your host. It's November 22nd, 2023. For my listeners who celebrate Thanksgiving, I wish you all safe travels and happy cooking. My kitchen is overflowing with pie plates, casserole dishes, and all the things gearing up for the big holiday tomorrow. We're getting to host our family in our home, and for that, I am very thankful. I'm also thankful for you, dear listener, for spending some time with me today. In today's show, I'm thrilled to be speaking with a mom who is also a health and fitness expert, and she lives right here down the street in our neighborhood. Her name is Vanessa Flores, and she is the founder of Kettlebell Kickstart. She helps active parents prioritize themselves to get leaner and stronger without sacrificing family time. Hugely important and hugely helpful for so many of us. She puts out a ton of of valuable content on her Instagram and Facebook. So make sure you check out the show notes over at secretmomhacks.com slash episode 42, where you can find direct links to all of her social platforms and you can follow along as well. Now in our conversation today, Vanessa is sharing some of her very best tips for staying active and eating healthy while balancing a busy family life. So get ready to take some notes. But before we get into that, I just want to say thanks for tuning in, Mama. I started this podcast because babies don't come with instructions. As of this recording, I am chasing around a five and a half year old that no amount of Googling, mom groups, or books were able to prepare me for. There's a lot of stuff people don't talk about when it comes to pre-pregnancy, during pregnancy, and postpartum. And as someone who was previously terrified of all of the above, I'm here to help you pull back the curtain on all of it. And every now and then, it may get a little messy. We may share a little TMI. But that's why you're here, right? My goal is you'll leave every episode feeling refreshed, inspired, and hopeful knowing you are not on this mom journey alone. Now, there's a lot of subject matter to cover when it comes to mom life, and we are covering it all. So... Let's jump into my chat with Vanessa. Vanessa, I'm really excited to have you on Secret Mom Hacks today. I think you're the only person in the neighborhood so far that I've interviewed. We have lots of great families in our hood here. It's been so fun getting to know you and your family since we've moved into our area here. I just know our listeners are going to walk away with some great tips to help us be the best parents we can be. Before we get into the questions, I know I emailed you a lot of questions. Tell us just a little bit about you and where you are, uh, and then however much or little you would also like to share about your kiddos and their birth stories. So I'm originally from Chicago, and then we got relocated to Georgia for my husband's job for about a year and a half, and then we moved to Tennessee. And we've been here five years now. I was a high school teacher and then I was an esthetician and I became a personal trainer and health coach, which is what I do currently online and from home. My daughter was, I was 38 when I had my first. And funny story is we were at a festival, like a music festival. I was 37 weeks pregnant and we were walking over from one stage to another to Bruno Mars and I'm walking and I'm like I think my water just broke but I didn't have any contractions so I didn't know if that was it or not and I was like oh my gosh I need to find a porta potty and I find one there's only one stall and there's a humongous line and I go to the front and I'm like can I please cut in line I'm like I think my water broke but I'm not sure the lady's like yeah go 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 so (laughs) we had to walk we had to get an uber get home I called my friend who's a doctor and she's like, you have enough time, don't worry, go home, take a shower, get your stuff, don't bring any red lights. And I told my husband, I'm like, oh my gosh, we didn't put the car seat in, there's no car seat in the car. I'm like, let's stop at the fire station on the way to the hospital. So we stop at a fire station, my husband's like knocking on the door, nobody comes out, we're like, let's just go. 
So we go to the hospital and two hours later, we're there. I got there like at 9 p.m. Didn't have her to 2 p.m. the next morning. So it was very, very wow. interesting story. <laughs> and then very my son. Eventful. <laughs> yes, very eventful. My son, I was 40 when I had my son. And that was really quick. We were sitting at the dinner table. All of a sudden, I felt like a pop, and that was my, my water broke. And this was right in uh, COVID, heart of COVID. It was May 2020. So we get to the hospital. They're like, your husband can't come in. We have to wait until we test you to see if you're actually you know, having a baby or not. I'm like, I have contractions. Like, <laughs> I am going to have a baby. So they take me up. I'm like 45 minutes by myself. My contractions are getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, I need him. I need his help. Like, I need my husband. So finally, like, okay, let him in. So they brought him in. And um, I was like, it, everything was just happening so, 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 so fast. And there was no running water at the hospital that day. And the nurses were like crazy. And they're like, the doctor's coming. Don't, don't push. And I'm like, I can't, I can't hold it. Like, my body's just doing it. They're like, lay on your side and close your legs till the doctor gets here. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then the doctor came. It was like one push and he was out. I, he, I went in at 9 p.m. He was born at 11.30 p.m. That's wild. <laughs> very different pregnancies and deliveries. Very, different. very different deliveries. <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So, okay, you have had a really multifaceted career, and now you are helping lots of folks. It sounds like primarily women and parents, moms, sounds like moms a lot, which is why I'm really excited you're here, of course. So can you share about your personal journey and what inspired you to focus on healthy eating and fitness through Kettlebell Kickstart, which is the name of your business? Yeah, absolutely. Growing up, I always suffered with body image, self-esteem. My parents are from Argentina, and Argentina is a very physical. Everyone's about looking like a model. So growing up, you always had comments like, oh, you're gaining a little weight. So my mom and sister were always on a diet. I was always on a diet. And then when I got to college, I really like honed in on my fitness. I totally restricted my eating. I was working out two hours a day at the gym and I got skinny, I got to a size zero, but then issues inside started happening. My menstrual cycle stopped. They were trying to figure out what was going on. And then after that, I introduced the foods that I restricted myself and I went on the total extreme of binge eating. Binge eating to the point where I felt so uncomfortable that I had to make myself throw up. And I was so fixated on food. Like I had a horrible relationship with food. And there was a point I was so deeply depressed that I was like, I can't live in these two extremes. Like I have to find a healthy balance that can heal everything that I've learned growing up and help me just live a healthy lifestyle. And actually that's where I found a kettlebell gym. It was strictly kettlebells. And their focus was specifically not on appearance, but on performance. Kettlebells are skill-based and it's all about improving at the skill. And they really focus on more plant-based nutrition or whole food nutrition. So I really learned a lot from that gym and it changed my life. Changing your view on food and fitness. And there is a way that you can do it that's sustainable and not extreme. You keep it very, very simple. Growing up, also, my dad, he was unhealthy. He passed away recently from emphysema, and there were a lot of things that he could have done to live a healthier lifestyle, and we always butted heads because I always wanted him to be healthier, to do things that were healthier, and he never listened, and at the point, he couldn't keep up with my kids. I'm older with younger kids, and he couldn't play with them. He'd laugh at them and lose his breath. And I'm like, I don't want to be like that with my kids. I want to be able to live fully with them, especially being older. I want to be around when my grandkids are around. And just seeing both sides, me and my parents, that's why parents are really big in my heart. 
is because our kids look up to us so much, right? And what we do, we want to instill so many great things in them, but we say them, but we don't do them, right? Actions speak louder than words, right? So if your kids see you, then it instills in them the healthy habits, the healthy active lifestyle. And I would just love like generations and generations and generations and really flip the script to what's going on currently in the health and fitness industry. Well, many parents struggle to find time for fitness. I was one of those parents and still it can be a struggle, even though it is a priority for me, but we can also Mm -hmm. only have so many priorities in a day that, that we can accomplish. Right. So my personal mantra has really been, well, anything is better than nothing. 15 minutes is better than Mm -hmm. zero minutes. 15 minutes today is better than, than zero minutes today. And another 15 minutes, it all, it's a compounding effect. Anything is better than not doing anything at all. So what are some practical strategies and some time saving tips that you recommend for incorporating activity, exercise, movement into a busy schedule. Yeah, and you're exactly right. A lot of people look at exercise as an extra thing that they have to do versus integrating it into their day. So like you said, if you only have 10 minutes, go for a 10 minute walk. If you don't have any weights at home, start with body weight. It's okay. You know, if you're in the middle of your workout and your kids are hanging on to you and you got to stop and take care of them and then get back into your workout, that's okay. A lot of people think that if it's not a full 30 minutes, if it's not a full workout, that it doesn't count, right? So, I mean, taking mini breaks, if you're at home on a computer, set a timer every kind of hour, hour and a half, do 15 squats, you know, 10 squats, anything just to get moving throughout the day. When you go grocery shopping or to the short stores, instead of making your goal to find the closest parking spot to the door, make it your goal to find the furthest parking spot. So that way you're just adding, you know, steps and walking just naturally without putting like that extra effort into it. Now let's take a quick break. Hey, Secret Mom Hackers, are you a budget-savvy family looking for a financial tool that can help you take control of your spending and savings? Well, I've got something fantastic to share with you, Cube Money. Cube Money is the ultimate budgeting solution that's tailor-made for families who want to manage their money with ease and precision. Here's why our family loves it. It's just like the envelope system we all know, but digitized. Imagine the simplicity of old school envelope budgeting, but with a modern twist. Cube Money digitizes the envelope system, allowing you to allocate funds to specific spending categories right from your smartphone. It's like having a set of virtual envelopes for groceries, entertainment, and more all in one app. The whole family benefits. Cube Money isn't just for individuals. It's designed to accommodate the needs of your entire family. You can set up sub accounts for your spouse and kids, helping everyone stay on the same financial page. It's a powerful tool for teaching financial responsibility to your children. Stress-free savings. Planning for the future is a breeze with Cube Money. You can easily allocate funds for savings goals, whether it's a family vacation, a new home, or an emergency fund. It's all about turning your financial dreams into reality. So if you're ready to simplify your family's budgeting, track your spending with precision, and achieve your financial goals, give Cube Money a try. Visit their website at Cube Money to learn more. That's Q-U-B-E money.com to learn more and use the discount code secret mom hacks, all one word secret mom hacks to get two months of their premium or family plans for free cube money on a mission to see you live more and worry less try cube money today. Now back to the show. In addition to the time for making that time for activity and exercising Mm -hmm. healthy eating can also be challenging when you're juggling all the family responsibilities. So how can families make nutritious meal planning and preparation more manageable, even on hectic days? Yeah. So the biggest thing is to keep it simple. 
the simpler it is, the more repeatable it is. And like you said, it'll compound in the more effective it is, right? So we always talk about for meal planning, right? First, think about, okay, where am I going to write down my meal planning stuff? And then figure out, look at your week. What day can you plan it out? What day can you go grocery shopping? And what day can you prep? Even if it's just a little bit of prepping, it doesn't have to take hours, right, to prep. And then make a list of all the favorite foods that your family likes and your kids like. So you have those as staples for your family and you're not thinking, oh, I have to make three meals at night and you already have it kind of planned out and you make things that the whole family can eat. And then I always say like a lot of people get overwhelmed at looking at the whole week and trying to plan out the whole week is start with breakfast. Start your day like satiated, feeling good, energized. And then once you have like your breakfast set, and again, I said, keep it simple. If you're a person that likes to eat the same thing every day, eat the same breakfast every day. <laughs> if you're like, no, I need a little more variety, pick two, alternate the days. Or pick three and flip-flop them, right? The more simple that you can be, the more sustainable, sustainable it's going to be, and you're going to be able to stick to it, right? Once you have your breakfast solidified, you're like, hey, I got a good sense of breakfast. Then that's when I say focus on dinner. And why do I say focus on dinner instead of lunch is because I always say make enough dinner to have for lunch. So you're not going out to eat. You're not looking for more recipes to make for lunch, right? And if you think about dinner and you're like, I don't know, I, that still seems like a lot, maybe pick a couple of days. Start with one or two days. And I always say, pick theme nights. Make it very easy. Like, oh, Taco Tuesdays. Okay, maybe we can do Mexican on Tuesdays. Mediterranean Monday. You make, you know, they're very simple meals that you can make, but we complicate it so much more <laughs> in our heads. And we think about the whole picture instead of taking it step by step. I always say health and fitness and lifestyle is a lifetime thing. It's not a 30 day thing. It's not a two week thing. And building up step by step is what's going to be able to keep going. Do you mind to talk a little bit about the importance of protein? Because of course, I've been getting your emails, <laughs> which have been really insightful. And again, in this journey that I've been on over the last, in particular, the last six months where I've really focused on just mindful eating and meal prepping mm -hmm. and paying attention to calories and macros and all of that and really trying to get more proteins and just the healthier fats and the healthier carbs and stuff. Two years ago, my meal prepping would have looked very different. It would have been lots of carby casseroles and maybe a small smattering of broccoli or whatever in it so mm -hmm. do you mind for for those who aren't familiar with the importance of protein and balanced macros the impact that all of that makes with feeling full and satisfied and giving you more energy which all of us parents need yes yeah absolutely we found that protein was the lowest amount of macro that um, people consume, especially women. So what we do is that's the first thing we focus on is protein, right? And then people get scared. They're like, oh, my gosh, then I'm eating high protein. And it's like you have to eat a ton for it to start affecting your body, right? So our biggest thing is think about when you're making your meal, make protein your focus. So we always say six ounces of chicken or shrimp or piece of steak, right? And then add your carb and then add the fats, right? But if you have it protein centered, your body takes longer for it to digest. So you're going to get fuller faster and it's going to keep you fuller longer than if it was more of a carb focused meal with a little bit of protein, right? And protein makes our body function in so many ways that we don't even think about. Obviously, people know the most is muscle, right? It helps you 
gain muscle. As we get older, we lose muscle. So having protein and lifting weights is going to help us rebuild that and help us stay stronger and not get fragile as we get older, right? Like you said, it helps you keep fuller longer. It gives you energy because you're not with like, if you have carb heavy meals, your sugar spikes and then it drops. And that's where we get those crashes, right? Where protein with obviously a balanced meal is going to help your sugar level stay more um, consistent versus those spikes up and down. It really helps with helping your body function correctly, like helping you with immunity, helping balance hormones, everything you can think of. I mean, protein is, has a big, big, huge role in it, which a lot of people I don't think understand how important it is. And we say like, again, take it step by step. If you're just starting out, we say aim for at least 30 grams of protein in each of your meals. Start there. And when you can build up to that, then you can dive deeper into what specifically for you would be best in terms of how many grams of protein. So kettlebell training is a central element of what you do. Mm -hmm. What makes kettlebell workouts effective and accessible for parents? I know you were talking about that at this particular gym you went to that it was more about as opposed to like the physique it was more about the skill I think that's mm -hmm. really interesting I, I didn't really realize that what makes these workouts effective and accessible for parents and how can newbies get started safely kettlebells definitely is a technique and skill based um, type of workout so like I said you do need to get some coaching with the kettlebell training because it is so very technique and skill-based, meaning that you need to engage your entire body in order to get the movements, right? A lot of other equipment, you can just target one piece of the body, right? And target another piece of the body where kettlebells is versatile. You can build strength, build endurance, mobility, power, it's all in one and you have to move around the bell, right? So in order for you to, I'm like showing it, but in order for you to keep that <laughs> bell in place, like you need to have like your shoulders packed into your lap, right? And you have to move around the bell to make sure that you're very stable. So it's really great for people that have weak shoulders very great for strength training in your core, lower back, all of that. Like people don't realize like how beneficial kettlebells are to the entire body and how versatile it is. When people start our program, we only have them get three kettlebells and that's it. And you do all your workouts with just three kettlebells. And so the workouts in themselves are very simple but challenging right so you get your most bang for your buck because you're training the whole body the entire time and when it's programmed correctly you're not targeting the exact same muscle all the time right and if you're just brand new to kettlebells obviously the best is to get a coach that is experienced in that but if not we actually created a resource where we do a tutorial when teach people how to do the kettlebell swing, that's the most fundamental movement because then everything builds off that swing. So just trying to find very basic, very fundamental movements and build up on that. Yes, because it can be intimidating. <laughs> we go to the Y and I, I have been doing some kettlebell workouts there, but I find myself gravitating just to like two or three weights. I have been able to move up a weight, which has been good. But I mean, they've got rows of so many mm -hmm. and di different weights, and w which is nice to have access to that. But that's good to know that if somebody's going to do this from home, that they only have to start with just three. That's good. Mm -hmm. You're not having to invest in a whole rack of weights. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need Where much space. Where do you recommend anyone who wants to ke get kettlebells? Is there like a best place to buy them? I feel like so many of us go to Amazon, but is that the best place? Or is there a particular brand or company you suggest? 
I mean, we always say as long as they're ca- like steel, you know, cast iron, they're a good kettlebell. You don't want to get plastic ones. You don't want to get ones with the um, shiny silver, you know, handle. You really want it to be cast iron because it's better for your grip and for it to slide um, in your hand. So it'll rip less because you do rip your calluses <laughs> when you use kettlebells after a while. Um, so you can get it from Amazon, but if you wanted like good, good, high quality, um, I would do like Rogue Fitness. I would do, um, there's another place called Tech Fit, Kettlebell Kings. Those are kind of like the top kettlebell places, but you don't need to start there. You can get with them from Amazon just as long as they're cast iron. That brings us to a close for today's episode, but Vanessa and I covered so much. There will be a part two, so stay tuned for that next week. I want to extend a huge thank you to Vanessa for making time to speak with me. Don't forget to check out her socials linked in the show notes over at secretmomhacks.com slash episode 42. You definitely want to follow along with her socials for smart ingredient swaps, simple, healthy meal plans for busy parents, and quick, effective workouts you can access from anywhere. I'm curious what your favorite part of our interview was. I hope you're walking away inspired with tips either for yourself or for that new mom you know. If that's the case, please subscribe for free if you haven't already. Give me a five-star rating and leave a review sharing your favorite takeaway so far. Don't forget to stop by secretmomhacks.com where you can find transcripts, resources, and more. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we'll jump right back in with Vanessa. Until then, you've got this, mama. Mama.